The popularity of the WNBA has exploded this year in a great way. According to the league, more than half of all WNBA games since the start of the season through the end of May were sellouts, which is a 156% increase from last year. And when it comes to watching at home, across all channels, WNBA games are averaging 1.32 million viewers. That is nearly triple last season's average. Now the league is getting its first expansion team since 2008. The Golden State Valkyries will begin play in the 2025 WNBA season at Chase Center. And joining me now, we've got Jess Smith, who's the president of the Golden State Valkyries, joining us here on Yahoo Finance. Jess, great to speak with you. Congratulations. I mean, I imagine there's like a Gantt chart of all the things that need to be done between now and May 2025. Where do you sit within this kind of broader range of things that needs to happen? And, and how excited about bringing this to life, are you? Yeah, this is so much bigger than Golden State. That Gantt chart is astronomical, but <laughs> it's a privilege to be able to work off of that. You know, right now, there are many things that are priority for us, but certainly building our fan base, bringing people together, understanding what the power is that we have the opportunity to build is top of mind. You know, the Bay Area is a region that often leads the world in both being progressive and innovative. This is the region where people look to to see what comes next. And for us at this moment in time, what you just referenced with WNBA growth, we get an opportunity to harness that through one of the best basketball legacies you know, that exists today. And to do that through women's sports and through the incredible athletes of the WNBA is pretty phenomenal. So we have close to 15,000 season ticket deposits right now. We're working through, you know, those folks bringing on our partners, but most importantly, thinking of team strategy and what that's going to feel like for our fans in 2025 as well. Slight tangent for a hot second here. What was the inspiration for the team name? That is a great question. That name actually was fan led. So when the team announced the expansion, you were showing some of those images when I came on camera, the San Francisco Chronicle here locally actually ran a fill in the blank, what should the team name be? And 25% of people wrote in the Golden State Valkyries, which is just an insane amount, right? One in four people actually calling for that name during that survey, definitely put it on the map. When you think of the Valkyries, you you think of, you know, it's a female warrior, right? So it's, it's certainly a nod to the incredible Golden State Warriors and, and being a part of that organization as well. And yet it stands on its own. That modern depiction of a warrior is relentless in their pursuit of doing what's right and certainly has the uh, you know ability to go out there and win with, with an attitude that way too. I love that. You know, I also love seeing some of the new fanfare that has been brought to the league by the latest draft class. You think about Caitlin Clark, you think about Angel Reese and adding them to the list of names that were already so successful within the WNBA names that some of them I grew up watching as well and that still have so much longevity within the league. I got to know if, if you get that first draft pick and of course what you intend to do with that that first draft pick for the franchise here as you build out your own team. Yeah, for us, so just to, we're going to have players beginning in December. So we have the expansion draft that will happen in December, followed by free agency, then followed by that college draft. What you said is exactly right. This new audience following these incredible athletes and draft classes is just the beginning of what you're seeing. This was year one. Next year is going to be just as exciting and so forth and so forth. You look at the freshman class right now um, that just wrapped up their year in the Hannah Hidalgo's and Juju Watkins, et cetera. Like it's, it's no end in sight when you think of just exciting talent funneling into this league to your point to complement the incredible incredible veterans here. But for us, you know, we need to win. You know, Joe Lacob made that very clear when the team was announced that he expects a championship in the first five years. And so our incredible GM in Ohama, who joined us most recently from the New York Liberty, that's what she's hard at work on. How are we going to piece this culture together through having existing players and certainly a new player through that draft build a legacy, you know, that all of us can can be a proud of and work against. Jess, you mentioned some of the amazing crop of future stars for the WNBA that are currently in college are currently playing abroad. And you mentioned Juju. I mean, look, I, I follow Juju as well on, on social media. And a lot of the college players are able to earn so much in NIL that they're almost able to kind of put off coming into the WNBA. You know, how do you attract that next wave of stars to say, hey, build on the success that you're already seeing and, you know, maybe don't prolong your college career. Come to the WNBA, bring some of your know-how on and off the court, uh, and we can all elevate this game together. 
Yeah. Well, first, that NAL money doesn't go anywhere when they come into the WNBA. So often you're seeing that actually increased as they're coming in. Sue Bird talked exten extensively about this, you know, with page backers as they were kind of analyzing some of that narrative that's out there. Secondly, the rules are different when you can enter the WNBA. So it's actually not a one and done like the NBA. They do have to be in college for for many for for more years or older before they have the ability to join the league. So right now, you know, it's actually working, I think, in everyone's favor for the NCAA and the WNBA to continue to see and harness that star power. And then when they enter the league, what you're seeing happen right now is that impact of the Cam Brinks, the Caitlin Clarks, the Angel Reese's, et cetera, where those are household names that people have been cheering for and can't wait to see where they go when it comes to draft day. Certainly. Just lastly, while we have you here, Jess, I got to hustle to my finish, but what are some of your top tips for, for female athletes negotiating their pay packages and trying to make sure that they're getting the, the full worth that they have? The, the biggest consideration in all women's sports right now is understanding and watching it become the product that it is. And it's different than men's sports. This product is a mix of sport and purpose and pop culture and making sure that it is creating platforms around that, that the content reflects that, that it's more than just media is really, really important. So certainly it's about negotiating, but you also have to create what that is to ensure that that brand value, whether it's for yourself, your team, the league, can translate to the brands that are looking to spend those dollars. At the end of the day, we have to prove that ROI, but our value set and what we're telling society and with that impact is certainly a big piece of that. Jess Smith, president of the Golden State Valkyries. We can't wait for the inaugural season here. Of course, we gotta, we gotta finish out this great WNBA season that is going on. And of course, we got some Olympics that are coming up here too, but really excited to hear what's coming on the front and next to Golden State. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Go Valkyries. Absolutely.